there and welcome to our online celebration. It's so good to be with you today and we're so thankful that you've taken the time to join us here on this wonderful platform. I really believe that this is in a moment that you and I can experience God, we can experience community and that we can grow into all that He has for us. If you're new to us and uh, you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, please do so. If you're watching via Facebook, make sure that you hit the like and, and, uh, and share and maybe even start a watch party uh, with some of your friends. Friends, my name is Gareth and uh, it's such a privilege for me to be able to share with you today. And today's online celebration, I believe, is going to be really impactful. So some of you are watching from Potchefstroom, some of you are watching from Clarkstorp and other parts of the world. And we are just so thankful that you've taken the time to be with us today. If you'd like to give, remember that our details are on the screen. And also, while you're watching, why don't you connect with us? Why don't you engage? Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, also, tell us some of the questions and prayer requests you might have. We have a team of people that are ready to pray with you and to connect with you. We have a very special opportunity today to hear from Bruce McAlpine. Uh, Bruce is a great friend of ours, and he has been ministering into City on Hill for many years. And he, I really believe, have, has a powerful message to share with us today. It's going to set you up uh, just for this next season. As we go into the December months, uh, we really do need God to inspire us and for the Holy Spirit to empower us in this time. Let's get together and hear from Bruce. Are you well? Yes. Very well. So I can't tell you how delighted I am to be celebrating with you this morning and this weekend. And, um, you know, it speaks about Jesus. It says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross and scorned a chain. You, you know the scripture. And, uh, I mean, you guys have the blessing of having Mark and Marie, so you'll understand my next statement. You don't know how hard it was for us to release Mark and Marie to clock, two clock sure. stores. What a gift. Yeah. But I'll tell you what. For the joy set before me, I thank God we did it. I just look at you and I think, Jesus. Some small little church there in Johannesburg was willing to give their best to the city of Clarksville. And you guys are the fruit of that. And my heart is like, wow. Lord, I want to keep on giving. I want to keep on training leaders. I want to keep on releasing leaders. I tell you, I want to cry when I say this. I want to just keep on advancing your kingdom, Jesus. Yeah. I'm going to keep on sowing and giving and releasing so that more people like you can be impacted for the glory of the King. Amen. Please pray that for us. Please pray that for Lighthouse. And we would just keep on raising up and releasing leaders and that God would keep on sending them for us. Not because we're special, but just because we will never hold on to anyone. Never. We will give them. We will give of our best again and again to see God's kingdom advance. Amen. Are you ready for the word of the Lord? I really feel like this is such a significant word for you guys. And I believe that, it's, that, that it's, going, it's going to change a lot of people this morning. Frick, won't you stand up, please, bud? I met you, Frick. I feel like during the worship, Frick, um, the Lord was speaking to me. And I just, for context, I don't know Frick, I've never met Frick, I've met him today for the first time. But I pay attention to how I meet before service, because of divine connections in the Lord. And um, Frick, I, I just, in the worship, the Lord dropped you into my heart, and um, I felt him say to you that he sees you as Cornelius. And I want to read to you about Cornelius. So Acts chapter 10, verses 1. 2.2 two, two says this, At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion that was known as the Italian regiment. He and his family were devout, God-fearing. They gave generously to those in need, and they prayed regularly to God. And then he has the vision, and he calls Peter to come to his house, and then Peter brings the gospel to the Gentiles. This is the G Gentile Pentecost. Yeah. This is the gentle Pentecost, and it came to Cornelius' house. And then this testimony. Um, these are the men that came to Peter, and they tell Peter about Cornelius. Verse 22, the men replied, We have come from Cornelius, 
the centurion. He's a righteous man, God-fearing. He's respected by all the Jewish men. A holy angel came and told him to, to send us to this house so that, and bring him to your, his house so he could hear what you have to say to him. And I feel that's how God sees you. I feel God wants you to know that he loves you and that he's pleased with you. Yeah. And I feel that he's not finished with you. Yeah. Amen. And I also feel this. I just, you've got to, you have to wait. Remember, my job is to deliver a prophetic word. Your job is to judge it. But I felt him say to you, bye, bye, bye. I don't know what that means, but those are the words I got. Bye, bye, bye. Amen. Then I thought, Purchase, purchase. Not bye-bye, bye, okay? <laughs> then I felt the Lord say this to me, that as I was going to be speaking to him, businessmen and women would be hearing that testimony, God-fearing, devout, generous, gives to the poor. God sends angels to them, God speaks to them, God uses them. And in your hearts, while I was speaking to Chris, something was going in your heart. I want to be like that. I want to be a Cornelius. I want to be a Cornelia, if you're a lady. Okay? So I'm going to ask you if this applies to if you're Cornelius or you're Cornelia. I'm making up Cornelia, you understand? But why don't you stand to your feet? Because I want to pray for you. I want to ask God just to release. Thank you. Thank you. It's going to release something over you this morning. Amen? This is an opportunity, my friend. I'm telling you, I'd be standing. Father, I come before you in Jesus' name. I pray for these businessmen and women that are standing, that have heard this prophetic word and this encouragement of a frick. And Lord, according to their faith, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would bless them. I pray, Father God, that you, by the power of your Holy Spirit this morning, would just impart something right now to them, Lord. Hey, Father God, I pray for ability to create kingdom finances. I pray in Jesus' name, for an ability, Father God, to be generous. I pray in Jesus' name for an ability to break the chains of poverty in this nation in the name of Jesus. I pray for them to receive solutions to our nation's problems that will be economic, that will be job-creating, and that will bring about freedom from the slavery of poverty in our nation. In this area, Lord, I pray that you bless these men and women and you raise them up in the name of Jesus. I pray for another Pentecost for them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my friends. I want you guys to pay attention to the message I'm going to share that have stood, of everyone, but you guys particularly. I don't know your names. I know Dirk, but I don't know your... What are your two names? Tian. Tian and Ruan. Tian and Ruan, won't you stand? Also just met these two Latis for the first time today, but they're not Latis, they're young men, amen, eh? But I've met their dad and I've traveled with their dad. And um, while I was praying again, when I, wasn't, I was just pr- in worship, and I felt the Lord just want me to encourage you guys. I feel like God, you know, you know in the Bible, they're the sons of thunder. Yeah. Huh? Come on. The donder vier. Amen. I feel like that God yes. has got a great call on your lives. Yes. And that you're going to impact business and the kingdom and the gospel. And people are going to get saved through you. Churches are going to be resourced through you. I believe nations are going to be impacted through you into your future and into your destiny. And I just feel like that God has put lightning and fire inside of you. And that uh, he's just going to do amazing things in you and through you. So Lord, we just bless them in Jesus' name. Help them. Keep them humble. Keep them faithful. Keep them available. Keep them teachable, Lord. But Father God... Let them become sons of thunder, that they would wreak havoc on the kingdom of darkness, and that they would bring the kingdom of God in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you guys. Amen. All righty. So it's half past 10. I can tell you now I'm not going to be done by 10, 11. Sorry, Mark knows. But this is such an important message. If you really need to leave, be free. Is that cool? You know... We normally finish at 11, eh? So if you need to go, I don't think we will go much past 11, but I know that there's some priesthood things I still want to do, but just open your hearts to receive the word of the Lord. Amen? God help me. Jesus help me to deliver this word. Amen.
So, I've been wanting to encourage you, envision you, and give you fresh vision and fresh fire for 2021. This message that I'm going to share with you, I've shared it about 20 to 30 times this year, all around the world. I've traveled to Canada. <laughs> no, I haven't traveled there. By a Zoom, I've got, I was going to joke with you guys. But honestly, to every single nation on the earth that I've worked, that I work into, I have shared this message. Because of the profound nature of it. Amen. And, and, but I, when I tell you, this morning when I was preaching in the first service, I felt such an anointing and such a release of faith that it, it just really believe that it's not by chance that you're here this morning yeah. and that God wants you to hear this message. Amen. And so, you know, Sydney Hill Church, I want to ask you, what do you see? What do you see for Clarkstop? What do you see for Sydney Hill? What do you see for South Africa? What do you see? What do you see? Dudley Daniels, the leader of the New Covenant Ministries team, says this, where you look is where you live. And I want to tell you that what you focus on expands. And your perception of life can be very different to life in reality, depending on where you look. Amen? So just put up that picture, please, if you don't mind, guys. Just tell me when it's up there behind us, if you can. And so, there it is. Okay, so... Who can see the goat? Okay. Who can see the bird? Who can see nothing? Some of you didn't respond. <laughs> okay. So now, if you, if you can't see the goat, I'll help you. On the, this, my side of this picture, you see that black line. If you've seen the bird, it would be the back of the bird's head. That black line is actually the goat's mouth. The bird's eye is the goat's eye, and the, goat, the, the bird's beak is the goat's ear. And he's looking over his shoulder like this, almost like scratching his back. Can you see the goat now? Yeah. Okay. Who can't see the bird? You can't see the bird. Ah, oh, beautiful. So the bird is looking this way. The goat's ear is its beak. And the goat's eye is its eye. And it's looking kind of out like that. Can you see the bird now? Isn't that amazing, eh? Both are in the picture. What's the point? The point is perceptions, my friend. And I want to ask you about your perception. The world, this nation, um, your church, and this city, even the province. And I want to encourage you today that there are three directions in which God is calling us to look if we are going to face 2021 with faith, hope, and courage. Amen? As we look into an uncertain 2021 in church, in business, with your family, with your children, I want to I wanna give you some really helpful handles that are going to help you to look there with faith and see the things that other people can't see. Yeah. Amen? Yes. Good. So I want us to look up, and we're going to see Jesus with a fresh perspective this morning. Then we're going to look back, and we're going to see Jesus' faithfulness to us over these last 10 months. And then we're going to look forward and I'm going to share with you 10 things that you can look forward to into 2020 that God has promised us. Come on. Amen? Yeah. You ready? So let's start by looking up. If you have your Bible, I'm reading from the NLT translation, so it might not come up on the screen behind me, but it's uh, from Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 20. Speaking of Jesus, this is what it says. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He created he existed before anything was created. He is supreme over all creation. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I don't like you, my friends. You know, when I read the Bible, I ask questions. And also, when I, I want to know things and know stuff and know God. Amen? Yeah. One of the things that I used to ponder before I had this revelation a lot was, God, I would just like to know what you are like. I would like to know if you were a human being, what you would be like. Ever, wanted, ever thought that? Ever yeah. wanted to know what God was like? Yeah. You know? Now let me tell you something. Let me demystify that for you. Verse 15 says, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. Yeah. In, in the Hebrews, beginning of Hebrews, it says, He is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of His being. Right. And so the Lord said to me, Bruce, you don't have to wonder too much. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And when you see Jesus operating on earth, 
you keep on telling yourself, this is God in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. It's amazing, my friends. Here's a little interesting bit of homework for you. Go and read Moses' God's revelation to Moses where he proclaims his name and his character to Moses in Exodus 33. The Lord, the Lord, gracious, compassionate, you know the one. Then go and look at Jesus' life and go and look at how Jesus models every one of those attributes 100% perfectly in the Gospels. And your relationship with God and your knowledge of God will go from here to there. There's a, there's a series for you, Mark, right there. Jesus revealed the Father in love as he revealed himself to Moses. Amen? Now listen to this. It says there, the next verse, he existed before anything was created. Now let's just, again, we, you know guys, we can just read these scriptures and they roll off our love, but we've got to look up. We've got to look up this morning. We're going to see Jesus with a fresh perspective. Now let me, hopefully by God's grace, unpack this for you a little bit this morning. He existed before anything else was created. You need to understand that God does not live in this universe. This universe exists in God, but, the, but God does not ex- God exists in the universe, yes, but the universe exists in God. God is not confined to the universe because the universe is created. The word universe means this, uni, one, verse, spoken sentence. And when God said, let there be light, boom, the universe came into being and God created the universe. That's right. He's word. The picture I get in my mind is like, you know, have you ever been in a room or in your house? So you exist in your house, and your exact exists in Clarkstorp, and Clarkstorp exists in South Africa, on the continent of Africa, in the world, okay? So God and Jesus and the Father, they're in their house, they're in the temple, which exists in their realm and their world, which is bigger than their house. And God says, we're going to create a planet, we're going to create a universe, that universe is going to exist for one purpose only, to, make a, to have this little planet, to have water and everything else. All of the universe exists so that this thing can exist. On that planet, we're going to make a being in our image and likeness. Wow. They are going to be your bride, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Okay? You're going to have to die for them. And like our friend Jacques, could say, or Jacques, Johan spoke to us today, but she'll be worth it. And Jesus went, I'm in. And just picture yourself blowing up a balloon in your house. Boom. Got one of those little weights. And in God's realm, the universe that, ex- that, that hosts the planet exists. But there could, it's very possible there could be another hundred balloons in God's existence. Because that's how big our God is. Now, I hope I'm blowing your little brain to pieces. And you don't have a little brain. I'm not being condescending. But in terms of the bigness of God. You know? Aliens exist. Of course they exist. God is an alien. Angels and demons are aliens. They are beings. They're spiritual beings. They're out there. They live. They're real. You don't have to worry about extraterrestrial life. It's there. There is an existence outside of this one. Why do you think they do, America invests all the money in NASA? Why do you think they do space exploration? But it's spiritual, my friend. And that universe, if there is another one, it's a contained, closed balloon. It could be impossible for man to get out of it. But I'm just telling you that in God, the existence is there. He's big. That's, that's all I'm trying to tell you. You might not agree with what I'm telling you now in terms of other universes in existence, and I, I, I can't prove it. But I can tell you this. The universe exists within God's realm, not God in the universe. You can't argue with me on that. Amen? Carry on reading. For through him, through Jesus, God created everything in the heavenly realms. Oh, that's God's world. And that's not just the universe. The heavenly realm is not just the universe. It's the heavenly realms. It's God's realm. And on earth. He made the things that we can see and the things that we cannot see. Now listen to some of the things that we cannot see. Thrones, kingdoms, rulers, authorities in the unseen world. There's whole other thrones. And on those thrones, there's kings. And under those kings, there's rulers. And under those rulers, there's authorities. And they're all in the unseen. You cannot see them. And I cannot see them. But Jesus created those as well. 
Helpful? Yeah. Everything. Say everything. Everything on this earth, in this universe, plus what we don't even know about that we cannot see, was created through Him and for Him. Jesus, my friend, is the reason why Microsoft and what's that, uh, Elon Musk and all of these people exist. They exist because He wills they exist. And they can say there's no God and they can do all of that stuff, my friends. But let me tell you something. That is like an ant saying that he doesn't believe in New York. They've got no clue about it. Some little ant there in Botswana somewhere and a little ant deal. Oh, no, man, don't believe that junk about New York. There's no place like that in the world. Yeah. Just understands he's a little ant deal. Amen. Yeah. He existed before anything else. Yes. And he holds everything together. This is Jesus, my friend. Listen, Jesus is holding you. Amen? Do you honestly think that God the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are right now having a conference, their fingernails are bitten to the quick, and they're like, flap, we didn't see COVID coming. Oh, Jesus. You don't think they understood Spanish flu in 1909? Or they're there? 40 million people died. Am I right? How many people in Spanish flu? It was millions, way more than the death toll now. And our population is way bigger than it was then. And Spanish flu came to pass. And COVID comes to pass. There's life after COVID, my friend. I tell you why there's life after COVID. Because Jesus holds all things together. Amen. And I want to say well done for coming. Amen. Verse 18, Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning and supreme over all who will rise from the dead. Church, sitting on the hill, we believe in a literal resurrection of the dead of every single human being that has ever lived from Adam to the last person before Jesus comes back is born. They will be raised from dead to life. And they will stand before the judgment seat of God and they will give an account for what they've done in the body. And those of us that know Jesus, have accepted Jesus, will be on the right and they will go to glory and will receive a reward. And those on their left, the goats, they, my friends, will go and receive the just punishment that they deserved. Hell, God sends no one to hell. It is your freely choice after you've rejected God and his provision of salvation through Jesus Christ. Hell is the greatest monument to human free choice on the planet. You choose to go there when you reject Jesus and the gospel, my friends. So he, Jesus, is first in everything. See, because Jesus was first to rise from the dead, it's a promise and a sign that we will also be resurrected from the dead. Don't be scared of COVID. I had it. My whole family had it. And the, the, let me tell you, it's one in 300,000 chance that you'll die from COVID, okay? And if you die from COVID, guess what? You're with Jesus. Yeah. Big deal. <laughs> That's the worst that can happen to you is you can die. Live with this thing like Paul. For me to live is Jesus and to die is to be with him. Yes. Don't fear death. You should, you've been freed from your fear of death. Oh, what about my grandkids? What about my family? I won't get to see them. Listen, you'll get to see them. They just won't get to see you. What do you mean, Bruce? Since we're surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses, let us throw everything that hinders and run with perseverance the rate set before us. One of my friends in my church, Nick Brown, died this year. He was an old guy, loved Mark. Mark loved him. Mark spoke to him just before he died. And he asked me this question. I'm going to miss seeing my grandkids grow up. I said, you're speaking junk. Don't you know the Bible after I've been talking to you for all of these years, Nick? You will be a, they will miss you, but you will not miss them. Don't fear death. Is this helpful? For God was pleased to have his fullness live in Christ, and through him God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Jesus' blood shed on the cross. My friend, when Jesus died on the cross, 
He rectified some things in heaven that got awry when Satan rebelled. And he rectified some things on earth when man fell. That's what it says. He made everything, everything in heaven and on earth through his blood shed on the cross. Jesus' blood is the most powerful thing on the planet, my friends. Now, King David says in Psalm 63 and verse 2, I've seen you in your sanctuary. I've gazed upon your power and your glory. Your love is better than life. My lips will praise you. I want to ask you this morning, sitting here. I, I, I read this psalm three, four weeks ago. And I said to Myra, Myra, I've been meditating on this psalm for weeks. I can't get away from it. I don't think I've seen God like I want to see him. I don't think I've seen God like David saw him. I've seen you in your sanctuary. I have gazed upon your glory and your power. Then he says, your love, it's better than life. I'll be honest with you this morning. I don't know that I can say that. I don't know that I can say that I've experienced God's love and that I love his love more than life. Can you? If you can, then you're prepared to be a martyr and die. But if you're not, then you haven't tasted it yet. Because that's the secret to the early church. How could they face the confiscation of their property, lay their lives down, and not deny their Lord? Because their love for God and his love for them was better than life. And why could, amen, why could Goliath, sorry, David, why could David faith Goliath and lay his life down for the nation of Israel? Because that Goliath had defied his God. And he would rather die than see some uncircumcised Philistine deny, defy his God. And he, because love, his love for God and God's love for him was better than life, he laid his life down for God. And that's why he could be the greatest king of Israel and he could advance the territories of Israel the furthest that he'd done because he didn't love his life more than he loved the love of God. And I am hung, I'm fasting. I am, one of the reasons I'm fasting is I want to taste this love that is better than life. Amen. What, how different would our lives be if we had that revelation? Jesus goes on to say, Luke 12. See, what does the Bible say? Perfect love does what? Cast out fear. Jesus in Luke 12, 67 says, what price are five sparrows sold for? Two cents? Yet your God does not forget a single one of them. The very hairs on your head are numbered. Do not be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Wow. I'm telling you this morning, my friends, God wants to break fear off of you. He wants to smash fear off of you. My daughter had a block drain in her, in her, in her, in her, in her basin in a shower a couple of weeks ago. And so we had to unblock her on the Sunday morning. And there was a sausage of this long of hair and soap and body exfoliation. It's lelak, man. Are you with me? And in that moment, the Lord gave me a word. He said, Bruce, I want to unblock my church. My church has been blocked up because of the circumstances around this year and all of those things. But it's time for you to unblock them yeah. by my word and by my spirit. We had such a powerful meeting that morning, my friends. And I want to tell you, my friends, fear has blocked the church. And if you block, don't, don't feel bad. I promise you, my, wife, my daughter's shower and her basin are not a bad basin. Naughty basin, naughty shower. No. <laughs> because it's doing its job, it got blocked. Yeah. And all we had to do is... Chick, 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 chick. Now it's going to work fine for another five years. Yeah. It's not a problem to be unblocked. You're not a bad Christian or a bad church or a bad person if you got unblocked. You just got, you just got blocked. Just allow Jesus this morning to wash you with his love, to give you a spiritual enema. Yeah. Are you with me? Getting that fear out and replacing it with the love of God inside yes. of you. Yes. Amen? Yes. And what helps you? Understand this, my friend. If you, if, if you, you know, made in China, underneath the thing, just, if you could see in the spirit, on your heel, there is, is, is there, it's there, it says there, made in Jesus, bought with his blood, Belonging to God. You're valuable. You're precious to God. Yes. You don't have nothing to fear. He's holding you. The one who's got the balloon of the universe in his office, he knows your numbers of your head. And he loves you. Yeah. And he's for you. And he's not against you. 
That's the upward look, my friends. I hope I've done justice this morning to just getting your gaze fixed on Jesus and reminding yourself of who you are and who Jesus is. That's step number one, to face an uncertain future in 2021. You look up. Amen. Number two, you need to look back. You need to look back, and you need to see what God has done. I was riding my motorbike the day after Mark and I got back from holding the wall in a quarry, and I was going up this quarry wall. And um, it's not a wall like this. It's, a, it's like a vault, you know. And um, you've got to be careful. Go too fast, you're going to ramp into the trees. Go too slow, you're going to slide back down the vault. And what happened is I just went and my front wheel got over the thing and my back wheel was down here, and I dropped my bike and I tore my, I didn't tear, I sprained my AC joint here. And I had to go for physio the last six weeks. I haven't been able to play golf or anything. And um, my brother was riding with us. He said, Bruce, you were timid. You were just too tentative there. You've got to give it a little bit more gas next time. Vicky Mopuyev. Power. What is that? Okay, there we go. Okay. So then I'm like, okay, so a little bit timid. Don't hold back. Next Sunday, the drain gets unblocked. That Thursday, I go to an apostolic team meeting for the churches in Gauteng. And that we're having worship, just waiting on God to speak to us, Lord. God brings a prophetic word. This is what God says to you. Listen, it's not a time to hold back. It's not a time to be timid. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a, of love, power, and a sound mind. The world is looking for hope. The world is looking for Jesus. They don't know it, but you have got the answers. And in place of the fear, you need to bring the love of Jesus. You need to bring the gospel. Don't hold back in this time, church. People can get saved. People, God wants to grow our churches. Yo. And then the guy said this. In fact, God says this. If you've got a choice between timidness and recklessness, rather choose recklessness and rather go on the wild side than be stuck in timidity. One thing that will describe God is reckless, wild, abandoned. But one thing will never describe God is fearful and timid. And rather be like God than be like that. Because that's the enemy. So I'm sitting there. Now, guys, I take prophetic words seriously. And especially a word like that. And I'm waiting there. And I remember flipping, I was timid on Saturday, I got hurt. So I'm like, Lord, this is, a, this is a powerful word. Help me, Jesus. Because I know my own doffness. Mark will tell you, I can be very reckless. I can take a lot of risks. And I've actually paid the price for some of that recklessness over the years. I said, Lord, it's a bit of a dangerous thing you're selling us. Immediately, the Lord drops into my heart this story. Two years before, now, I was riding my motorbike, different one. On this, and we're doing an art ride from Wimpy, sorry, from the, uh, Boxburg to Nigel, and Nigel back to Boxburg. And it was afternoon, and we we're going on this mine dump dirt road. I was going, that could throttle, couldn't go anymore. Six gear, it's an it's a off ride bike, I was going about, it's, so it's not that fast, but it's like 130 k's an hour on this dirt road. And it had r- rained the night before, and there were these little puddles, and we were aqua planing through these puddles, you know. Anyway, last puddle, bigger one. And I didn't know this, but on the right-hand side of this puddle, there was this dip of about a meter. The other ones were this to a plane. So what happens is my back wheel just, just a little, because I was going so fast. But that was enough just to go, woo, 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 at 130 k's an hour, okay? And it's just rocks and dirt, and I think, oh, Jesus. He come it, you know? And I thank God, on the left of this road, there's a stream with these bulrushes. And I can't say I consciously chose it, but I honestly just feel the Lord gave me a little bit of a nudge. So I come to the left, and I kind of ramp into this river. I do a perfect one. Um, so I'm going like a three, yeah, 180. I do this, and I land in this river. My back's facing the way I was coming from. Totally submerged in water. It's a submarine now. You know? And I'm totally wet but not a scratch on me. The Lord reminded me of that in that moment when I'm saying, Lord, reckless, I don't want to, I, I want to be reckless if that's what you're saying, but I don't want to be stupid. Will you protect me? I felt God say to me, Bruce, if you step out, if you take risks for me and for my kingdom, if you take a chance in me, I will always provide a stream for you to fall in. You'll not get hurt. Yeah. But, Bruce, he said this to me, if you're timid and you hold back, you're going to get hurt. Businessmen, I want to tell you, you Cornelius, I'm telling you right now, this is the word of the Lord. Don't be timid. Don't be timid in this season. 
Don't be timid in the season. Seize the day. Take the opportunity. Warren Buffett, Donald Trump, and all of these guys have made their money. They tell you when everyone is selling, they're buying. You obviously got to judge this word, but I'm telling you what God said to us. Same in the church, my friends. Talk to your friends at school. Talk to them at business. Tell them about Jesus. Invite them to church. Next time I come next year, if I have the privilege of being invited back, I want to see this state full of new visitors. Yeah. Because you were a VIP that started to invite other people. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Helpful? Yeah. This is the promise of God, my friends. So, backward look. I'm going to take you backward to January this year. Listen to this prophetic word that was given to me by one of the ladies in our church, 10th of January. Note the date, very significant. I'm sitting here this morning having tea and I'm listening to the song by Chris Tomlin, Goodness, Love and Mercy. I feel God wants to remind Lighthouse that his goodness, his love and his mercy will sustain Lighthouse in 2020 and that in him we will be satisfied. I feel external circumstances are going to come to bear on us that are going to cause us to wobble corporately and individually in what God is calling us to. Wow. However, the promise of God is that His goodness, His love, and His mercy will sustain us and will give us grace and endurance to see through the year. But can I get an amen? amen? What a word. Now, to be honest, at the time, you think it's a good word. But you have no clue what's coming. You have no clue. 27th of March, lockdown. That's incredible. I look back. I've, I'm telling you, this is not a promise for Lighthouse. This is a promise for the church of God. God's goodness, God's mercy, and God's love is enough to sustain you, provided you look up and keep your eyes fixed on Him. Amen? I want you to think about the goodness and the love of God and how good God has been to you over this last 10 months. Think about how His goodness and His love and His mercy are sustaining you. Even if you lost your job, even if you lost the business, even if you lost house, even if you've gone through some stuff, my friend, the fact that you are here, that you're breathing, and that you've got health, my friend, that's just enough already, isn't it? Yeah. But I want you to seriously think of just some of the goodness of God to you. Now, as I was preparing, this was my first message back to our church when we opened up again. And they'd already heard it in the beginning of the year a lot. But now, my friends, I, because of time I can't, but literally in my notes here, I've got five testimonies of Lighthouse and how good God has been to us this year. And I've got four for us as a family, the provision of God, the goodness of God. I'm just going to tell you two of them. So Lighthouse, in March this year, start of March, we had 200 grand short. Mark will tell you, churches, finances go through cycles, and Lighthouse has had their fair shares of up and down. And often the presence of God, the glory of God, is here and the finances are here. And often the finances are here, and the presence of God and the glory of God is here. I don't know how it works, but they just they never seem to go together. So we were in a bit of a tight situation. And to be honest, so, so, and it wasn't creditors, it was, it was my salary, it was Myra's salary, a couple of months behind, and one or two of our staff members just a couple of weeks behind. Not a great place to be. But hey, if you're generous and you're giving, you're going to get there, you know? And so... Um, I'm like, Jesus, I just need you to come through that. Listen to this. A businessman from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. From Zimbabwe. Yeah. God has spoken to me. I feel he wants me to bless you with 150 grand. Not me, Lighthouse. Someone else tied at just before lockdown. This guy had big faith. I don't know who it is. I don't ask people to put their names on the tithes and offerings. Put 100 grand tithe into our account. Yeah. And we got our normal tithes and offerings. My friends, we had like two and a half months in one month. Got the backlog, paid everything up to date, and we had 50, 40,000 rand left to start our Isaiah 58 um, community feeding scheme to provide food for the people in our church need, but also the community around us. Wow. In those months, amen? In those months, it's amazing, we were able to partner with four other relating churches in the city, Sorry, three other, plus us is four. And we would go on Saturdays when we could. Sorry, Wednesdays when we could, and then Saturdays in, in, in Norwood. And we would give out food hampers to people. 
and we would preach the gospel. I'm not lying to you when I tell you every week between 10 and 20, 30 people were getting saved at our place and at those churches. God was just doing it. Amen? This is our God. I've got more, but I'm not going to tell you about them. Just one personal testimony. My son, David, 20, 21 now, when he was 18, we had the opportunity to bless him with a little second-hand car, and he wanted a Honda Civic, older model, cult car, black, everything matte black, big sound, you know, MTS, mags, tint, and sound, okay? <laughs> and, um, and so we got it for him, but to be honest, I, I wasn't happy. Eh? I was like, David, I think you're making a mistake here. You should buy an 200 bucky. It's practical. It's going to do the job. He's starting to be an architect. You're going to be on site. Anyway, no, Dad doesn't know nothing. Anyway. So then I've been paying for these years, but I'm checking, man, this cost costing as much as my product to get serviced because it's so old. I said to him, that's it. The limit on the service is two grand. Anything above that, get a part-time job. You're paying the services. Now let's sell the car, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I said, good. Sold it just before lockdown for 15 grand more than what he would have got now. He sold it for 85 grand. Then he wanted to rush out and buy a car. I said, we're going to lockdown, David. Put the money in the bank. After lockdown, I can tell you now, people are going to be desperate for cash. Then you buy an MP200. Good boy, this time he listened, waited. He bought an MP, MP200 thing for 65 grand. Yeah. Had the 85, put a service in it, got it all fixed up, tawny cover, lacquer, moi moi, ala nomers. Smiling with 10 grand change. Wow. This is our God. Yeah. This is what God can do for us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now, I want to tell you, I want to tell you, my friend, just in case you're thinking that. This year for me has been plain sailing, loving it. My friends, we got COVID. The third week after COVID, my friends, for three days, I had no vision, no sex drive, no hunger drive. I didn't even want to get up. I'm not a depressed man by nature, but my friends, for the first time in my life, I experienced it. I was just done. I forgot all of these things. And I was like, that's it. Check me out. No tip, just check me out. You know? And it's like... I had to fast and pray for three days to get back with the Lord. I've been through the mill this year, my friends. I have to tell you, I've had, what I'm teaching you now, I've had to fight tooth and nail in the midst of fear and intimidation and challenges and stuff. I've been, oh God, you said, God, this is your word. God, you said your goodness is going to be enough. Your love. Help me, Jesus. I want to die. But Lord, I'm trusting your word. You can understand the Psalms where David says, God, my enemies surround me. I feel like I'm going to die. The bulls of Bashan are coming for me. You, I understand it because of this year. I'm sure you do as well. Amen. So that's the backward look. I need you to, don't be lazy. If I'm helping you this morning and you understand what I'm saying, I want you to go home and I want you to make a lacy of all the goodness of God to you this year. And every time you have fear and every time you worry, I want you to look at that lacy and I want you to put it before the devil and shove it in his face. And then I want you to take it to the Lord and say, thank you, Jesus. Your goodness there will sustain me here. Amen. You know, amen. The Israelites, listen to what the Israelites said. You've got to read Deuteronomy chapter 1, chapter 2. They come to the promised land for the first time. They send the spies in. The spies come back. They bring that massive cluster of grapes. So they can see it's a good land. It's flowing with milk and honey. They actually say, it indeed does flow with milk and honey. Yeah. 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 But God forgot one thing to tell us. The giants live there. And we grasshoppers in their sight. The people don't hear the fruit. They don't hear the goodness. They don't hear the promise then. They say, listen to what they say. God hates us. That's why he brought us out of Egypt to die at the hands of these Amorites. How? Huh? absolutely stupid is that? Do you honestly think God would have gone to all of that trouble? He would have just killed them in Egypt. <laughs> What's wrong with Pharaoh's spear? Do you honestly think God needs the giant to just go, you know? Can you see what fear does? It should circuit your brain. And it comes with all kind of junk, nonsense, no logic. My friends, they, for, they forgot to look up and see their God. Number two, they forgot to look back. Let's just think, 18 months, eh, from there to where they were. 18 months, two years, no more. Ten plagues. God delivered a nation of slaves from an American superpower 
Pharaoh structure with template ordination to their knees. Opened the sea and then destroyed the army of that nation in the sea. Then took them to waters that were bitter and turned them sweet. Led them by a pillar of fire and a pillar of cloud. Spoke to them in a theophany. The whole nation heard him speaking to them, the Ten Commandments, at once. They saw the mountain burning. They saw the smoke. They built the tabernacle. They had water from a rock. They, if they had looked back, they would have seen the faithfulness of God. And they would have said, these giants, man, they're like mosquitoes in comparison to Egypt. There's nothing. But they didn't look up and they didn't look back. Therefore, fear got a hold of them, blocked them, and they stopped them from getting into the inheritance and their promised land. Don't let it happen to you. Helpful? Amen. Now, we've looked up, we've looked back. Now let's look forward. That was the 10th of January, that prophetic word. Listen to what happened on the 19th of January. So I know, the 19th of January was a Sunday. I normally prepare on a Wednesday. We, our family got a little place in the vault there. So I go there and I'm praying. I'm waiting on the Lord. Having a beautiful time with the Lord, studying. He's showing me a lot of things in the Word. But I just know what He's showing me is not the Word of the Lord for Sunday. And I, I know, like Mark, guys, I don't want to get up here and give you stale bread. Give my church stale bread. I want fresh manna from heaven. I want fresh water. I want to lead my sheep to still pastures. They're not my sheep. They're Jesus' sheep, but I'm leading them. Quiet, you know, green grass, all of those things. Nothing. I get up, wake up, okay, Lord, great time at the vault with you, but Thursday morning, get up, wait on the Lord, nothing. Friday morning, get up, nothing. Saturday morning, get up, nothing. Sunday morning, 4 o'clock, I get up. Next month, I'm starting to repent of sins I haven't committed yet. I'm starting to, you know, I'm just I'm like, Lord, am I deaf? Have I, is something wrong? With, what, what, what is it, Father? Next month. So I'm like, Jesus, help me. I say tomorrow, come, hop a six, let's go for a run. Because the Lord speaks to me on when I'm running, often. I just get so tired, I can't speak. Then he says, ah, you shut up now, now let me talk. Okay? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm running, and the Lord reminds me of two things. One, I was in Colombia the year before. I was speaking to two 20-something-year-olds that want to get married. They said this to me, we're going to get married, but we don't want kids. I said, why don't you want kids? I've got four. They said, no, we've got no, who wants to bring up kids in this world? No, we can't bring up kids in this world. Come back to South Africa, speak to another 20-something. Same thing. In the church. Believers. And the Lord says to me, how sad is it and how bad is it when the future of the church don't have hope for the world in which they live? So that's what he reminds me in the run. So now I look at my watch and think, Lord, I've got to shower. I've got to stretch. I've got to get dressed. I've got to eat. Those are two great thoughts, but to develop a sermon out of that, Lord, it's like, you know, I'm not that good, Lord, you know. Doesn't say anything more. Pull into the pre-service, pull into the pre-service prayer meeting. Now, you know that Amos 3, 3, 7 says this, God does nothing without first revealing it to servants, the prophets, okay? Listen to what happened. I come into the prayer meeting. One of our elders, Dennis, is leading the prayer meeting. His opening scripture is Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yes. And I say, like, oh, hope. This is interesting. He asks like a question, and I want to ask you the question. Who is the hope of glory? Jesus. Jesus. I, don't, I can't hear the oaks at the back. Jesus. Who's the hope of glory? Jesus, Jesus my friends. Then he asks us another question. Who are the carriers of the hope of glory? The church. The church. And the Lord says to me, how sad is it when the 20-something-year-olds who are the future carriers of my hope of glory have no hope to carry? Bruce, you need to give my church hope. Then the next thing just blows me away. In the prayer meeting, 10 people in our church Different people, some leaders, some not leaders, some priests. They start to bring 10 words on hope that God has been talking to them about that week. Wow. So now I'm listening, eh? And the Lord says to me, yeah, you're not deaf. There's no sin. You don't have to repent of un- uncommitted sins yet. I'm, t- I'm teasing. 
But he says, you're not preaching today because these 10 people are preaching. And all you're going to do is tie it together with hope. I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm in. I don't know where this is going, but let's go for it, bro. You know? Would you like to hear those 10 words? Listen, they're going to blow you away. Word number one, 19th of January. Listen to what it says. What can you look forward to into an uncertain future? This is the first thing you can look forward to. Joel 2, 25 to 27. I will repay you for the years that the locusts have eaten. Amen. Amen. The great locust and the young locust and the other locust and the swarming locust, my great army that I sent amongst you. Amen. You will. Say you will. you will. You will have plenty to eat until you are full. And you will praise the name of the Lord your God who has worked wonders for you. And never again will my people be ashamed. Wow. Then you will know when this happens, post-COVID, and when God restores you, then you will know that I am in Israel, that I'm in City on the Hill, that I am the Lord, that I am God, and that the universe exists in me, not me in the universe. Yeah. Yeah. And that there is no other God, and you, my people, will never be ashamed again. Wow. Who needs to hear that word this morning? You need to receive it, my friends. God is promising restoration to us. Second word that came from Barry. Psalm 53, verses 5. Listen to this. Very important. But there they are, overwhelmed with dread, when there was nothing to dread. My friends, COVID is real. I got it. I'm not denying the existence of COVID. But I want to deny the following. The level of fear that is the media have put on it and the politicians versus the risk and all of those things is totally off the charts, completely skewed. And in that context, the amount of fear and dread you have is in comparison and is what, what you have, there's nothing to dread. There is something that you've got to be careful of, but you don't have to dread it. So Barry was walking, he said this, he was walking, he was camping in East London, walking from his caravan to the Blushen Block. And he said, Lord, speak to me. So Barry said, look up. So God says to Barry, look up. He looks up and he sees the stars. And God says to him, Barry, I created every one of those stars. I know every one of those stars by name. And I'm holding them in their place. And just like I'm holding those stars, I'm holding your life. You've got nothing to fear, Barry. What's the Lord saying? Do not fear. Do not dread. I'm holding you. Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 27. The eternal God is your refuge. Underneath are the everlasting arms. Underneath are the everlasting arms. He will drive out your enemy before you saying, destroy him. He says to you, destroy your enemy. Number three. One of the guys in our church, John Thompson, bought this word. Ezekiel 37, 1 to 5. For the sake of time, because I'm already way over. It's the word where he says, prophesy to the dry bones. And they bring the dry bones to life. Amen? And what what was God saying to us? He was saying, I'm the God who raised Jesus from the dead. And just like I raised Jesus from the dead, and one day I'm going to resurrect you from the dead, the things that die this year, I can breathe life back into them, says the Lord. You've lost a business. God can raise raise a business up to life. You've lost a whatever. God is able to bring restoration. And the dead areas of life, God says, prophesy to them and let them live again. Your relationship with the Lord could have died. God can resurrect it. Your marriage could have died. God can resurrect it. Children that are far from God, God can bring them back. Fourth word that came, Mike Henning. Romans 15 verses 13. And I'm going quickly now just to finish. Sorry, I ran out. I didn't watch the time properly. May the God of hope fill you with all joy, peace, as you trust in him. May you overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to tell you, my friends, your portion and God's desire for your life is joy, peace, and hope for your city, for this church, and I want to tell you for the South Africa. During the worship, the Lord said this was a prophetic word for South Africa. I want to tell you, people are saying South Africa's done. People are saying, that's it, it's finished. Track up, pluck to, this is the word of the Lord. I am not done with you, South Africa. I will restore you, I will bless you, and this place will be prosperous and be blessed. I felt God say that to me, and I'll tell you, I'm, you see, with our businesses and our family, I'm going to have to tell my family some things this week. Amen? Fifth word that came. Sylvia, one of the ladies in our church. 
Psalm 24, 8 to 10. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? He is the Lord strong and mighty. It's El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty, my friends. My friends, pick up your head, man. Oh, EFF, oh, Ramaphosa, oh, ANC, oh, DA, oh, business, oh. Slap yourself. <laughs> Take the stuff of the scruff and then kick your own backside and tell yourself, look up, you skirmunkle. Look back at the thing and then look forward in faith. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There's, four, there's five more. I'm not going to do them. I'm just going to do one more. And I'm sending Mark the notes. You can pick up the other four. If that's okay. But listen to this. This is the peace de la resistance for me. Max Peter, one of the guys in our church, came from 1 Kings 10, 23 to 27. And it speaks about the majesty of Solomon and how he made uh, silver as common as like, what does it say there? Silver and... Uh, yeah, silver was as common as stones. And the, and the sycamore tree... As, as, uh, see this, Pentaphil, a sycamore tree in the foothills. The whole world came to sort and all these things. Listen to his wisdom, his majesty, his glory. You, you, you know, all of that stuff, eh? Then he takes us to Luke, 1, 30, Luke 11, 31, quoting Jesus. The queen of Seba will rise in judgment of the people of this generation, condemning them, for she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom. But now, something and someone Greater than Solomon is here right now. What is Jesus saying? I'm a bigger king, and I have a better kingdom than the kingdom of Solomon. And then he said this, and he lives inside of you, lighthouse. He lives inside of you, city on a hill. Oh, something just broke off of me when I, when I heard that, my friends. And I'm trusting this morning that God would unblock you, and he would unlock you. Would you stand to your feet if you're comfortable to? And I'd love you, if you can, or if you're comfortable to, if you know you need to be unblocked this morning, if you know that fear has gripped your life, negativity, and you know that this word is a word from the Lord for you, I want you to raise your hands, and I'm going to pray, and I'm going to ask God for two things. I'm going to ask God for a release of His love that's going to bring hope and faith and all of those things and joy and peace and I'm then going to ask that God would destroy fear in your life and literally would unblock you and he would give you faith for 2021. And at the end of that, I'm going to count to three and I want the loudest amen that this building has ever heard. Is that cool? Because amen, be, what, what does it mean? So be it. Amen. That's going to be your agreement. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for what you did on the 10th of January and the 19th of January. I thank you that you always prepare your prophets for what is to come. And Father, I ask in Jesus' name for these people, the prophets, yeah, at City on a Hill. Lord, I want to ask in Jesus' name that you would pour your love into their hearts by the power and the person of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I pray for another Gentile Pentecost in Jesus' name. Father God, I want to pray that the fruits of the Spirit of peace and patience and kindness, and goodness, and gentle self, and self-control, and Lord, most importantly, joy, because the strength is found in joy, would be imparted to them in this moment. And Father, we stand in agreement as one man and woman, and we come against the spirit of fear, yes, and intimidation, and an anxiety, and hopelessness, and despair. And we say to you, in Jesus' name. Wow, friends, I'm so impacted by what Bruce has shared with us. Can you just sense the Holy Spirit right now, just working in your heart? Bruce mentioned some key things and prayed through some key things with us as well. Just uh, giving us an opportunity to be set free from some of the things that have been holding us back. And perhaps also moments that we can actually take some steps to be able to be set free and to live a life of freedom. Can I ask you to um, just take a moment right now to reflect upon that. To maybe even share some of your thoughts in the comment section. If you are far from God today and you want to put your faith and your trust in Jesus today. Won't you let us know? Maybe just type the word far in the comment section below or contact us on our website. The details are on the screen. Friends, as we go into the rest of uh, our celebration, we're going to have a time of worship. 
this is a moment for you and I just to respond, respond in thanksgiving to what Jesus has done for us. Uh, and I want to encourage you to open your heart wide to uh, make your affection to Jesus known and allow the Holy Spirit to empower you as we do so. God bless you.
Wow, thank you so much again for joining us for this online celebration. These are important moments and we want to encourage you to join us next week. Same time on YouTube. We'll be streaming at 8 a.m. in the morning, South African time, or on our Facebook page at 9.30. Please join us and we look forward to connecting you again.